So let's do a quick review of the price mechanism. Basically, in simple terms, the price mechanism is essentially the system by which movements in prices, so changes in prices, work to bring a market back to equilibrium. So first of all, you can see the demand curve here, the blue curve, intersects the supply curve at this point right here. We call this the equilibrium point. Now, at equilibrium, quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. There are no shortages, there's no excess demand, or surpluses, there's no excess supply. Okay, And the equilibrium price is PE and QE. So for now, the market is at equilibrium. Well, what happens when something throws the market out of equilibrium? How do changes in prices bring the market back to equilibrium and get rid of any shortages or surpluses? So let's assume there's either an increase in demand or a decrease in supply. Either an increase in demand or a decrease in supply will create a shortage, a situation of Another word for shortage, a situation of excess demand. So an increase in demand or a decrease in supply will create or will cause a shortage, a situation of excess demand. The market is now in disequilibrium. So how do prices change to bring the market back to equilibrium? Well, um, this excess demand will exert an upward pressure on the price. So price gradually rises, very gradual, rises to clear that shortage or excess demand. As you can see here, um, the increase in demand, the shift of the demand curve from D to D1, the shift to the right, has created a shortage. You extend the line from the original equilibrium to the new demand curve, you see that quantity demanded is higher than quantity supplied, there's a shortage. And gradually, price begins to rise, which leads to an increase in quantity supplied, a movement along the supply curve, a decrease in quantity demanded, a movement along the new demand curve until a new equilibrium is reached. And the same can be observed when there's a decrease in supply. As you can see, the decrease in supply from S to S1, the curve, supply curve is shifted to the left. This has created a shortage, a situation of excess demand. You can see QD is now higher than the new QS. So price begins to rise, which causes a movement along the demand curve to a new equilibrium and a movement along the new supply curve to a new equilibrium at a higher price. So generally, whenever there's an increase in demand or a decrease in supply, this will create excess demand. Excess demand will exert an upward pressure on the price and price will gradually rise to clear that shortage or that excess demand. And the opposite is true. So if you have a decrease in demand or an increase in supply, this will create the opposite of a shortage. It will create a surplus, a situation of excess supply. This throws the market back into disequilibrium, all right? The market is now not at equilibrium. So this will exert a downward pressure on the price. And so price gradually falls to clear that surplus or that excess supply. As you can see here, when the demand has decreased from D to D1, it has shifted to the left. This has created a surplus. This surplus slowly exerted a downward pressure on the price. As price gradually fell, quantity demanded increased, quantity supplied decreased until the market reached a new equilibrium point. And the same is true when supply increases. When supply increases, it creates a surplus, which exerts a downward pressure. So price gradually falls. This fall in price gradually increases quantity demand, gradually decreases quantity supplied until a new equilibrium is reached. So you can see that um, as price rises or falls, it gradually clears any shortages or surpluses that exist in the market, naturally bringing the market back to equilibrium. And this is essentially what the price mechanism is. So as you um, may have seen already, the price mechanism refers basically to changes in prices that work to bring the market back to equilibrium. Um, prices or the price mechanism have various functions, functions of the price mechanism. What are they? Well, first of all, there's a signaling function. Prices actually send signals. 
When prices rise, it signals that there's a shortage. Okay? When prices fall, it signals that there's a surplus. Another function of prices is that they um, adjust people's incentives. So prices actually incentivize consumers and producers to adjust their consumption or um, production. So if prices are rising, that signals that there's a shortage, but it also incentivizes producers to increase quantity supplied and incentivizes consumers to consume less or buy less. Um, through signaling and incentivizing, essentially what prices do is that they work to reallocate scarce resources. Remember, resources are scarce. So if prices are rising, this signals that there's a shortage and it incentivizes producers to switch, bring some of their scarce resources into the production of more of that good or service to clear the shortage. Okay. At the same time, prices work to ration scarce resources and basically distribute the output that has been produced. So let's see how this works in each situation in the next two slides. So as I mentioned earlier, but now this will make it a little bit more structured or clearer for you. An increase in price serves a few functions. Number one, it signals that there's a shortage or excess demand. Number two, it incentivizes producers to increase quantity supplied and incentivizes consumers to decrease quantity demanded. Number three, it reallocates scarce resources to producing more of that good or service. Number four, it rations. So the people who end up buying are the ones who can afford the higher price. So you can see there are several functions to the price mechanism, a signaling function, incentivizing function, which both help reallocate resources and ration this output. And the opposite is true. So what happens when there's a fall in price? Basically, a fall in price signals that there's a surplus, there's excess supply. Number two, it incentivizes producers to lower quantity supplied and consumers to increase quantity demanded. Number three, it reallocates scarce resources to producing less of that good or service because there's a surplus. So what society actually needs is less of that good or service. Number four, it rations or distributes, helps in distributing the output that is produced because now more people can afford the good or service. The people who um, will buy the good or service are the ones who can um, afford that good or service. So you can see how the um, price mechanism and changes in prices send signals to producers and consumers. They adjust the incentives that producers and consumers are responding to. They, uh, changes in prices help reallocate scarce resources into the production of more goods and services that are in shortage and less of the goods and services that are in surplus, and also helps with rationing or distributing the output based on who can afford. I hope you enjoyed this review and the price mechanism now makes more sense, please contact me if you have any questions.